And Shalom. Shalom. First off, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rukak Radash. Yahweh be the true name of your Father. Yahweh Shai be the name for His only begotten Son, who the world eagerly calls God and Jesus Christ. We want to give double honors to our apostles, double honors to our elders, a great millstone, Natasha's truth, and we're well. And scientists, you hopefully, pushing the truth and honesty, sincerity. We have brothers at GMS Kansas City Camp. Uh, brother Yo Sop and brother Khan, brother Tazi Arbanyanyan, Yao Bashim Yao Shah, break a thumb to the old full leg. Khan, just doing a uh, sit down through the spirit. Um, basically, uh, just going through a, a quick a quick experience, you know, uh, personally, is um, basically uh, leading this lesson. You know, when you're trying to do good, do the right thing, you know, Satan will, will come in and, and tempt you and try you, you know, basically to try to make you fold. Because uh, if you can't handle adversity, then you can't handle being a man of the Lord, ultimately. So you're going to go through a lot of tribulation, a lot of frustrations in life, especially when it's truth that, you know, you have to basically prove yourself. That's the, pur that's the purpose of those trials and tribulations. Everything ain't supposed to be a cakewalk all the time, you know, because ultimately the times that we're coming in, your faith is going to have to be uh, very, very large to withstand the things that you're going to experience. Jacob's troubles is about to be no joke. Having to refuse the the, um, the C hip, that's going to be no joke. Okay, martial law. You know, uh, trying to get food, all those things, and, and that's there could be so many different um, avenues of, of trials and tribulations. You got to be be able to withstand them all. You know. Sure. Uh, first precept I got. This is 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to start at verses 20. I'm going to read in the NLT first. It says, of course. No, no, no. Let me start at verse 19. It say, for the Most High is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. It says, of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, the Most High is pleased with you. And I'm going to read it in uh, the KJV. It says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscious toward the Most High endured grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults, when ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with the Most High. God, God. So ultimately, you got to use the example of what Yahweh Shai went through. You know, um, he he suffered all, all types of stuff for, not for something he didn't even do, man. You know, um, this is why the scriptures say, be ye blameless. You know, ultimately, we can only be blameless in the eyes of Yahweh Shem Shai. But to everybody else in the world, you're not going to be blameless. They want to blame you for everything that's going on in society. You know, even in your personal lives, things that are going on with your, your, your woman, your kids, your, your parents, you know, they're going to be the one to target you. It's your face that's going to be blasted on the news as being a, um, a domestic terrorist when you did nothing, man. But, but bring out the word. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're going to be framing us, you know. Locking us up for, for everything we stand for in the Lord. This message that we've been preaching and laboring for all this time. They're going to come after you for it. Yeah. Especially because they, cause they see in the way you conduct yourself that you take this truth very seriously. Like when you first get your first few years in the truth, your, your parents think you're just going through a phase, man. Right. And then eventually you just stop talking to family members. You know, you all together put away pork, put away whatever the fuck lifestyle you was doing, and you move complete opposite of how you was living in the world. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. And they don't like that change. They want you to stay in the in the sinking boat with them, man. You know, they want to yeah. stay in that in that lifestyle they think is is uh is profitable, but really the ship is sinking, man. They're on this cruise. It's like it's like being on a Titanic. You know, you had all those people that were kicking it and partying dancing all that super luxury um, architecture up in there man and they were having the time of their lives in the midst of the boat was slowly sinking yeah you know that's that's how you have to view your your, your family and their celebration of their holidays and things like that man okay. their ship is slowly sinking and they don't want you to 
to go out and all of a sudden say, hey, the ship's sinking, I'm getting on the boat. When they look around and all they see is, is pleasure, they look at you like you're crazy. Fuck you talking about? Yeah. You gonna get on a rowboat for what? No, stay right here with us. Yeah. Yeah, but the Most High gave us that forewarning, that, that for, you know, wisdom being prophecy of knowing what's gonna happen and, and taking it serious and, you know, the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yashah for that because a lot of Jake sees Israelites. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Jake is, is seeing us on these YouTube videos, seeing us on these highways and byways, and just don't choose to uh, indulge, as you will say. Right. But the ones that, that do get into the truth and walk it sincerely, hey, Satan Satan will, will, will find it to make it hard for you, man. Right. God, all types of um, weird shit will just happen out the blue, man. Yeah. Vehicle may fucking break down out of nowhere, you know, and then... When it rains a storm, one bad thing happened, all of a sudden a shit storm and stuff just starts going wrong. You know, but you gotta be able to just, just deal with it, man. And, and wait for your time to increase. You know, because there's a balance to everything. And ultimately, we all still are building this shithole as hell for all these hundreds of years. The ultimate increase is the kingdom. That's right. So we waiting for that. You know? Um, and I got a precept. Uh, this is the book of James uh, 1 verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahweh hath promised to them that love him. And it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahweh, for Yahweh can, cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted. When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Alright, so sometimes, you know, the things that you're going through, you put yourself in that predicament, man. You got to remember that too. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily always... You know, Yahweh, well, Yahweh Shai allowing Satan to just fuck with you okay. out the blue. In some cases, yeah, you, you're choosing to do a lifestyle that he doesn't approve of. And he warns you, say, hey, look, don't do this. Don't live this way. Don't go down this path. Right. And you do it or dabble in a little bit of it at a time and go back off and go yeah. back in and deal with it and deal with it. You know, thinking that, hey, I guess the Lord, you know, is forgiving me for what I'm doing. He's not going to he's not going to fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden, bam, something happens to you. And then it's, woe is me. Oh, Yahweh yeah. hates me, you know. Yeah. yeah I, I must be. I must not be a man of the Lord. Take heed. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, Jake, Jake ain't innocent all the time either. Because as you say, it may be things that draw us to make wrong decisions that we have to pay for in the long run. Right. And, and some certain things you want to avoid and certain things that you shouldn't, uh, you should level up. You know, beyond that becomes a hindrance for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because in, in life, if, if you don't if you don't cut certain things, certain people, certain places out of your life, that'll be a hindrance for you in the truth. And those things will come back and bite you, even if it's certain behaviors that we have. Right. God. Um, a great, great example is your, your body, man, your health. If you spend years upon years within your life smoking and overindulging and drinking you might end up quitting one day cold turkey but that, does that mean the damage has, hasn't already been done yeah yeah eventually later down the road you're gonna have some lung issues you know you might you might come down with with asthma and you're like well i ain't smoked in years what the fuck well you spent all that time you was smoking you know or what else what else um bad effects yeah that you can get i mean even with your um your health, you know, you might have done some things that was contrary to your heart. You know, spent too many years eating that damn, you know, greasy food. Yeah. And then next thing you know, yeah, you got in the truth. The Lord is, is happy that you're in the truth, but you spent so many years not taking care of your body. Kind, so, kind. So then it catches up to you, you know, and it's just it's just your time to catch up to pay for the, the iniquities you did. Yep. You got to remember that, man. You know? Uh, this is the book of Mark 14, 38. It says, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. 
The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Okay? Mm -hmm. So watch, pay attention, and pray. Unless you get into temptation. Now, that temptation will come in, man, and try to pull your ass right out the truth, man. Yeah. And it'd it be, it be the right decision in your mind. Right. Because it's a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a man is right in his own way. Right. Roughly paraphrasing. But yeah. the wages is, is dead, something like that. But like I said, in that moment, you may think that's the right thing to do. You know? And like, it, it'll feel so good to get certain satisfaction or do certain things. But, you know, hey, every every, every thought isn't of your how about you shot. Let's just say that. Well, I got a preset to back you up. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful yeah, above yeah. all things okay. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yeah. You know? And you're dealing with people in the world, they'll tell you, oh, well, Yahweh knows what was in my heart, what was in my heart, this and that. Yeah. Well, the heart is, de is deceitful. Right. Yep. You thought you're doing the right thing. You thought you're really doing something that's innocent, but you're doing something extremely wicked. And you know what? When you're in the midst of committing those things, quit lying to yourself. Until you howl while you howl shy. Yeah, yeah. Because you got people that sit there, well, I say, oh, I didn't know. There's something called, called a conscience, man. Yeah. And what that is, is the Holy Spirit trying to keep you on the right path. And the angels telling you, hey, don't be doing this shit, man. Yeah. What you're doing is wrong. You see it off. You yeah. making a decision to, to stifle that down and push and muffle it. Oh, I ain't trying to hear that. I'm going to do it anyway. Yep. Because right now, this is what's going to make me feel better and, and get my, my uh, anger release off. Yep. Or get my pleasure off because I really, really miss doing this shit, yep. you know? Yep. Can you read that again? Huh? Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things mm -hmm. and desperately wicked. See, and that's why it's, it's important that we have counsel and we have other brothers to uh, 